There's a lot of questions out there about Alexi's gravity flyer and what metals he's actually using, what parts, and what it actually looked like. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you pretty much a slideshow. This is a lot of pictures of exactly what he has, and I'll try to go into the circuitry and everything else. This may take a while, so let's just get into it. So, one of the first questions I always get is, what is the center disc made of? Charlie C. had it tested. It is absolutely aluminum. The aluminum is actually flat, has no texture to it whatsoever. Even though it appears so, it's actually flat. And there's a corrosive material on the outside. I would imagine that can be scraped off. I'm not sure if it's acid etched in there or if it's just corrosive. But it's definitely on there and it's definitely in the aluminum. The total width on this is 15 and a half inches. One thing I will point out is if you look at the outside ring here that curves over, there's actually little rivets in it that hold it on. So it wasn't a bend of the metal. It was actually a separate piece that was added in. This is the top rotating disc. As you can see, it's eight and a half inches wide and you can see it's textured aluminum. This is the bottom rotating disc. As you can see, the same textured aluminum. The same size, eight and a half inches, and we're looking at six magnets in here. These magnets are L Nico magnets, A L N I C O. As you can see here, they clearly have some shielding around them. Here are some various measurements of the magnets as well. And as you can see here, all the magnets are cracked, and yes, it has flown with the magnets cracked. Here are the measurements for the nuts and bolts used to attach the magnets to the rotating disc. Let's take a look at the gravity flyer one more time. And we're going to go ahead and get into the bottom section of this where the rotating disc is and what's actually under there. This is a picture of both discs. We're going to be focused on the one on the right. As you can see, this is where he connected all of his wires into the bottom that connect to the entire craft. So let's take a look at the other side of this device. As we can see, we have our motor in here. We can also see how he connected the motor. And we can see the little brass piece of metal that he used to put the voltage, high voltage, onto the rotating disc. These are the motors that he's actually using on this craft. Let's move on to the top portion of this device. As you can see, there's our piezoelectric disc right there, and we have our little cone that sits on the top. The piezoelectric disc is actually connected into a piece of plastic that sits up in the cone. And here is a better picture of exactly how it's attached in. There's no question he has a piezoelectric disc in it. These are some pictures of the nuts and bolts used in this craft. Here are some measurements of all the parts around the craft. Here are some better pictures of the brass parts and how they connect to each rotating disc. The first one is the upper disc. The second one is the lower disc. The wiring when shipped was completely labeled. This is a wiring diagram provided by Alexi himself. This is a more cleaned up version of that same diagram. This right here is a CAD design version of Alexi's gravity flyer. It also includes dimensions between discs. When all those parts are put together, we have one finished gravity flyer. 
the original from Alexi himself. Let's unbox our high voltage power supply and take a look at what's inside. Here's a look at the variable power supply that Alexi uses. This is a look at the DC flyback that's used in this circuit. Here's a look at the rest of the wiring used to make a ZVS driver. This is what it actually looks like all together, and Charlie C was good enough to provide a circuit diagram for this. Let's go ahead and move on to the Tesla coil. These are some pictures from all around the Tesla coil so you can get a good understanding of what it looks like. These were all the measurements taken from various parts of the Tesla coil. An important part to notice on the top of this Tesla coil, there is no toroidal. What there is, is there a hole in the top where he places the wire. Here's a look at the circuitry inside the Tesla coil.
This is a schematic given by Charlie C. for this Tesla coil. We are now going to look at the ultrasound circuit for this device. These are all the circuits and components that go into this ultrasound device. These are all the measurements for the parts inside this device. This is the piezoelectric disc that this circuit connects to. Also a final few pictures of this device. This is the power source given for this device. This is a circuit that Charlie C. provided for this ultrasound machine. This is the last device and circuit given for this craft. It is a gravito meter. It tells you when the fields are present. Here is a look at all the circuitry, components, and measurements of this device. Here is the circuit provided for this device by Charlie C. 
These are all the original components given for the Grabby Flyer. The original version, the one that everybody saw on the internet. Now that you've seen all the components and everything that went into the original Grabby Flyer, here's the payoff. Alexi makes it lift. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.